move the whole Here thing. Here we go. You sure, oh, you sure you don't want to bring this closer? We're, we're live. we got to make sure people can hear us and see right, us. A lot of times they just say hello, which we appreciate, but it's always helpful because there was some pixelation the last week. And I know if they, people on YouTube complain, but if they would just sit with it, I put in the show notes that it was only for eight minutes. Okay? Teresa says she can hear us. Uh, thank you, Teresa, uh, so she can see us. So let's yep. get started because we're in the kitchen and in the living room today. Hey, everybody. I'm Chef AJ, and welcome to Episode 58 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm the creator of the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and this is where I answer your questions about healthy, permanent, and sustainable weight loss. The best way to submit a question is through my website, www.eatunprocessed.com. As promised, I'm going to make every effort to do at least one recipe a week for the entire year. And if you watched last week, I gave you a little teaser and I showed you the pumpkin raisin muffins that my husband Charles loves to eat every day as his second breakfast. I'm going to show you how quick and easy they are to make right now. Got my oven preheated to 350. If you've ever watched any of my television shows or YouTubes, you know I'm a really big fan of having an oven thermometer to make sure your oven is calibrated. Even if it's a brand new oven, you would have no idea how often they are not accurate. That is my air fryer showing it's preheated. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to make for dinner. So in my food processor fitted with the S-Blade, I have a half a cup of date paste. I made a large portion of date paste that I'll use for the week, the month, and it freezes great. I'm using the recipe in my book, Unprocessed, on page 65, because then they have the perfect ratio of dates to liquid for my recipes. Uh, you can use any date paste recipe you like, but if you want to do it exactly like me with the same water to date ratio, use the recipe on page 65. You can buy date paste commercially, but it might not have like the, the same hydration. So I left a half a cup in the food processor fitted with the S blade. And date paste freezes beautifully, and um, you know, I guess you could omit it. It just depends how sweet you're used to things. So it's a half a cup of date paste, which means for 12 muffins, everybody's getting two tablespoons of date paste. And remember, half of that is water, so it's not that much sweetness. Okay, so I've got my dry ingredients already measured out. I've got three cups of gluten-free oats, two tablespoons of ground flaxseed, a tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice, and a cup of raisins. So I, I'll often just do this in advance and just pull it out when I'm ready to do it. So in the food processor where we have the half a cup of date paste, I am adding two ripe bananas. The riper your bananas, the sweeter it's going to be, and then maybe you won't need the dates at all. Now, these bananas are, are pretty ripe. I like to get them even riper. They weren't ripe when I bought them. So here's a trick I learned. You take an apple, you put it in a paper bag, and for some reason, they brown quicker. So again, these are, these are all right. I mean, I would let them go a little bit further for my, when I'm doing a baked recipe, but these will be fine. So I want to use two large ripe bananas, so I find the largest ones I, in the bunch. And then I'm going to put them in the food processor with the date paste, or I can put it in first, actually, because I want to get it into a puree. But there was already dates in there from the date paste. So I'm going to just puree that. probably one of the only boxed products I use because I don't use it often enough to keep making it. This is probably the only thing in my diet that still has sodium. How much does it have? 170 milligrams in a cup, so half of 170 is 50, 85. But it doesn't matter because I'm not eating these muffins anyway. They're for Charles. So I'm putting in a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. I like using the vanilla, but super easy to make it yourself. Watch episode six or 10 of The Chef and the Dietitian to learn how to make it yourself. Perfect. And now I'm gonna add one can of organic pumpkin. Make sure it's not pumpkin pie filling because that will have sugar and possibly eggs. So we're gonna add that to the food processor. Very easy. And you can, in California, you can pretty much get pumpkin all year round. Uh, so if you are living in a place where it's hard to find, just buy it in advance. The other secret is, is you can always find it at the pet food store because pumpkin is something great that they use for dogs for bulking up, especially if you're trying to get your pooch to lose weight. So the canned pumpkin sold at the pet food store is exactly the same. It's just more expensive. It's 99 cents at Trader Joe's at Whole Foods. This is where I would add it. So now I'm going to 
Now I'm going to mix the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients, just like that. Comes out really easy. Smells good already. Just make sure that when you're using spice blends like pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice, curry, chili powder, that you like the spice. I've told this story before, but spice blends vary widely. Chili powders vary how hot they are. Curry powders. I used an apple pie spice once at a demo in Texas that had fenugreek in it, but I didn't get the label, and it made the worst tasting apple pie rice pudding you could imagine. So always make sure you read it and make sure you like it. All right, so now I just mix this up. Let's find my spatula somewhere. Here's another one. So I'm using silicone baking muffin pans, but you can use any kind of muffin pan if you're willing to use a muffin liner. Now, why am I using muffin liners with the silicone? Because it's easier to clean, that's why. But the great thing about silicone, especially in fat-free or oil-free baking or cooking, is nothing sticks. So I just mix my ingredients together very easy in my beautiful Tupperware bowl. Does your almond milk have oil in it? No, I never use anything with oil or sugar. That is a non-negotiable for me. The only almond, the only plant milks I've seen without added sodium are soy milk, which unfortunately I'm allergic to, but it's a very clean milk. Oat and milk is doesn't have oil usually. No, I'm saying the only ones I've seen without salt. Many of them don't have oil, but salt is pretty much in every processed food product. They don't have salt in many soy milks. It's, it's just that I can't have it because I'm allergic. And coconut milk often doesn't have added salt, but it's so high fat they don't want to use it. So there we go. So then I like to take a little scoop because it just makes it easier. And I plop it in each one. This should make perfectly 12 muffins. Do you think it would make a difference to not have the flax seeds in there? Uh, would it make a difference? Probably not because these aren't rising anyway. Uh, a lot of times we use flaxseed and baked goods in place of eggs, but since they're not really rising, I don't think it would make a difference, and I'm pretty sure that I've made them without the flax seeds. Now, there's certain recipes where you're using flax seeds and you're making something called flax eggs, then right. you would want to have it. So, so as a matter of fact, I did actually make these for Nina and Randa on their YouTube channel because they can't have any added fat because they're on the clear skin diet. Yep, just and, like me. Right, so yeah, absolutely. So you don't, I, I don't know why I started putting flax in, but this is a really old recipe. And by the way, this is not in my new book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. This is a bonus recipe that when you buy the book on the day that I'd like you to buy it, you're going to get a new cookbook that's never been released called Nothing But the Fruit. And it is a dessert cookbook I wrote a long time ago with recipes just um, to sweeten with fruit that I never published. So yeah. and that will be for sale by itself after the, what we call the launch. There's only one day you can get this as a bonus and my uh, my audio book, the audible version of Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. So if you want to make sure you're on my mailing list at eatonprocess.com because there is only one day where you get all these free bonuses. We don't know what day that is yet because we're still waiting for our copy to come to us and to prove it. but we're Someone very, wants very me good. to show the almond milk. Yeah, that's the one I use because they have it at Trader Joe's. I love this store at Trader Joe's. But it's really easy to make your own almond milk just using... It's the 365. Uh, this is this is not 365. Oh, that's one that I use. That's not the one I use. That's what I have. Oh. I just I try to get one without carrageenan. So can you see how beautiful these mm -hmm. are? I'm just going to stick them in the oven. By the end of Weight Loss Wednesday, they'll be ready. I'm just going to plop them in. I'm going to put my oven timer on for 45 minutes. The toothpick tests do not work on these, so just 45 minutes if your oven is calibrated should be correct. Now, let me show you, as long as you're here, I've got to eat dinner, and this show ends right about dinner time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some rice and veggies for dinner. I've got my Instant Pot. Remember, at instantpot.com, you get $10 off with code AJ. I've got three cups of my favorite rice in here, which is the organic brown basmati. And then I have three cups of water. People always write me and say, how many minutes for this? How many minutes for that? Look it up, guys. you got Google. I mean, get a pressure cooker cookbook. There's a bunch of vegan ones I've told you about before. Get the iPhone app, uh, the app, not just for the iPhone, but just get the Instant Pot app. You can look it up. It's a one-to-one -one ratio for brown rice in the pressure cooker. I'm using the three-quart because that, along with the eight-quart, is my favorite. I'm going to use the manual button because the rice, the, the rice button is for white rice. So I am just going to put it at uh, 25 minutes. They recommend 22 to 25, but I kind of like it more well done. That's it. Shabang. Boom. We're done. We're going to have rice when we're done. Now I'm going to put some vegetables in the air fryer. 
So we've got this wonderful organic blend of rustic roots from Costco. And sometimes Eden joins us afterwards, so I'm just going to make two trays. Just going to put them all out on the trays, my air fryer trays. And what's all in that? Um, I'll read the label, but it's, it's carrots and sweet potatoes and parsnips and onions. And it's organic and it's delicious. Yum. And um, because I really like mushrooms, I'm just going to add some mushrooms to them. Why not, right? Can't hurt it, could it? Nope. Make it better, maybe. So they're there. And so when people say recipes, recipes, cooking classes, cookbooks, guys, you just need to learn to enjoy food. Doesn't need all kinds of bells and whistles and spices and sauces and flavors. Right. Get an instant pot, get an air fryer, and that's it. it took me less than five minutes to make a delicious dinner. So I'm going to stick it in the air fryer. And when we're done with the show, we're going to have an amazing dinner. And this is how I cook every night. Somebody's asking if you move the Breville Smart Air Oven from underneath the cabinets when you use it? Or? No, I don't. I don't. That's it. Going in the kitchen now to answer your questions, and we'll show you the muffins when they're done. All right. Would you like to be on the left or the right? John Pierre. I have a special guest today, my partner in crime in the Ultimate Later. Weight Loss Program. A lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people bash Trader Joe's. To oh. me, that's like bashing veganism. It's like the greatest store in the world. And this is the only place that sells these. You ever had these, JP? They're excellent. These Murasaki sweet potatoes. I eat about a bag a day. That's about 1,125 calories. If you're wondering, three pounds, you will not have a problem getting rid of sugar from your diet once you learn to love sweet potatoes, especially. Yeah. So let's get started. Hey, you want to be on the show today? Okay. Aww. All right. Look at that adorable dog. Yep. Okay, so you kind of addressed this already, but um, Donna asked what type of cookware you use. I'm gonna let you go first. Well, Instant Pot. Right. My blend tech blender. Good. Right? So I have a blender and I have an Instant Pot. Mm -hmm. And then you use the Breville. I don't use that. But, right. Um, and then I basically just use a stainless steel uh, pot. That's right. It. Any special brand? No. Yeah. I'm like him. I, you saw what I did. I keep it simple. I use my, my Breville or my other air fryer if I'm just doing enough for me. And I use the Instant Pot because here's the thing. You can do everything in the Instant Pot that you can do in other pots. You can saute. You can you can cook right in it. So I don't need a pot. But the pot, the pan that I have, I've had it for years and it's in perfect condition. It's a Pampered Chef hard anodized steel. I think it might be Teflon, but they're saying Teflon's better. Teflon's bad, right? Uh -huh. Teflon's if you bad. Have birds. Yeah. But is it bad if you don't have birds? Well, think about it. It's not it good for birds. It is bad, yes, not good for, for humans. Right. But now, aren't they doing a different coating like over the Teflon? And I don't know. I, say, I don't know much about that. I also have a couple of pieces of waterless cookware. They're excellent. Oh. But the truth is, is, since I'm doing almost all my meals in the Instant Pot, why would I bring out another pot to saute my onion when I'm going to be putting it in the Instant Pot yes. anyway? So pretty much, that's what I have. I know that like Shada uses the Copper Chef. Mary McDougall, I believe, uses it. It's called the Scan Pan, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, my philosophy for everything is the best you can afford. Yeah, and if you do get an Instant Pot, you can also just buy an insert extra. Yeah, absolutely. So an extra and insert. I believe people that are really concerned about stainless steel, they can even buy a ceramic insert. Oh. But I'm not sure. So, great question. Thank you so much. Hello. So, Stephanie said, since I started eating my veggies for breakfast, mostly the oven-roasted ratatouille, Yum. I have the most painful flatulence. <laughs> Same with brown rice. I guess this is just an adaptation process. I have already started taking Heather's tummy fiber. Did you experience anything like this when you increase the amount of veggies in your diet? I had no problems with eating mostly starch, but the veggies are somewhat hard to digest. Well, I'm, I'm surprised that rice is making somebody have flatulence okay. because usually that helps people. Depends what you combine it with though. Mm, but maybe if she had rice separate, it'd be interesting to see if she had rice by itself. And was it white rice or brown rice, brown rice. or wild rice? Brown, I brown. assume. Brown, okay. And of course, you have to start out slow when you're adding vegetables, mm -hmm. especially if you're from a standard American diet, just can't throw in three, four, five pounds of vegetables without incrementally adding right. up to it. Right. Up. And that's why, you know, even though we recommend at least a minimum of two pounds of non-starchy vegetables, you don't have to eat them all together first thing in the morning, no. especially if you're starting out. And one of the things I recommend that people do is Google list of gas producing vegetables. Uh, excuse me, Bailey, if either you hold or I gotta They're put her down. Put it. They're usually cruciferous <laughs> vegetables. Exactly. Yeah, the sure. Brussels sprouts are a great the big cauliflower, exactly. cabbage. Right. Those are the biggest gas producers. Mm -hmm. Things like zucchini, 
Not really. No. People really don't get gas from cherry tomatoes, no. from, Celery, from zucchini. Carrots. So so the thing is, is you can choose vegetables that are least gas producing. The thing is, is people, I mean, the crucifers are delicious, and mm -hmm. those are the ones that have those really amazing compounds that, that help fight mm -hmm. the cravings, and, and they're just so good for us. And But you have to work your way up to it. And yep, slowly. But you have a saying, though, about gas. Better gas than a bypass. Right, meaning gastric bypass so, or heart bypass. Yeah. And anyhow, gas is a natural, if you look at animals, mm -hmm. I mean, they have gas all the time. It's a natural part of, part of life. I mean, so it might not be, you know, you might not be the biggest hit at the party, right. but just, you know, kind of go slow. It's the same thing with beans. If you just start literally with a tablespoon of beans mm -hmm. and then work your way up every day a little bit more. You know, it's funny because we get a lot of comments on our ultimate weightless, uh, weightless, ultimate weight loss, <laughs> that, that's a new name, uh, uh, private support group about people, they eating vegetables for breakfast, but they have jobs and their coworkers are complaining about the smell. And I find that hilarious. The smell of the vegetables? The smell of oh, the right. vegetables, especially when they're cooked, yeah, you know? Yeah, of course. And, um, and, the, and the, it, you know, that, it sounds like a human resource issue because it's really <laughs> not fair because, you know, I, to me, like, when, if, they, if somebody cooked, you know, bacon in the microwave, that oh. would be just yeah. as offensive to me but this I think one day maybe we'll see a Supreme Court case mm -hmm. about this but I will tell you a funny story because I'm completely this really just happened last week when we came back from True North I'm oblivious to any foul smell in vegetables because to me that's what I eat they smell good to me right you know there are people like that eat what what is it not jackfruit what's durian mm. there yeah are people durian. That, that eat this uh, it's a fruit right yeah. mm -hmm. and some people find that a really oh, yeah. not nice smell but people that love it love it sort of like so certain certain things like that so we came home from true north we had an 11 o'clock flight so they serve vegetables for breakfast at true north so I took my pound of broccolini and put it in my Tupperware but I was waiting till I was hungry to eat which happened to be 12 o'clock about two-thirds the way into the flight so I opened my broccoli and I was munching away completely oblivious to anything <laughs> around me because when I'm eating I'm focusing on the eating <laughs> When I got through, I noticed that the stewardess came down the aisle, and I was in the window, and Charles was at the aisle, and she started spraying like air room freshener right by Charles. And I thought that was that's just odd. And I and, and after we got off the flight, I said, Charles, why did the stewardess do that? He goes, Do you understand? He was mortified. He said, Once you started eating it, the person in front of us looked, the person over there went like this. So apparently, my oh. broccoli offended the whole airplane wow. so much that they had to actually spray right by me. I didn't even know, but you know, mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? You know, it is um, what it is. someone asked, Was JP ever overweight? No. Are you overweight now? <laughs> Just kidding. No. Uh, so you've never suffered or struggled. Would anybody in your family ever been overweight or mm. your friends? Pretty much just average weight, Jeez, I wow, guess. Wow, pretty cool. Lucky. Yeah. So then how come you have such an interest in helping people that are overweight? Or is it just because you have such an interest in helping women and women tend to be... Well, it's not just about being overweight. I right. think ultimate weight loss is about ultimate health and right. happiness. So losing weight just like lowering your blood pressure or opening up your arteries is just a byproduct of healthy living. Right. Okay, so Angela said, I saw something on the boards a couple of years ago about a suggested potato hour. Do you still recommend a potato hour mid to late afternoon for UWL? I'm eating about three pounds of veggies per day and half starch with all of my meals, but find that I'm just sort of looking for something mid afternoon. Yeah. So for me, for a lot of our clients, I do. And one of the reasons I discovered this was a particular client that was doing great for breakfast and lunch and then overeating slash binging from before dinner tonight. And what was happening is on the commute home, you know, you get stressed, you're driving in traffic, things like that. And by the time she got home and had to prepare dinner for her family, she, she really was hungry. There tends to be, if you're somebody that eats three meals a day, or even if you eat two and it's, it's like lunch and dinner, it, there just seems to be a longer stretch of time between lunch and dinner than between breakfast and lunch. Mm -hmm. In True North, they don't eat breakfast till 8.30, and then lunch is all the way already at 12. That's like really close. Mm -hmm. But dinner's at 5. And so sometimes people really are hungry. Maybe they didn't eat enough at lunch or not enough starch, or maybe they have a job that's really using their brain and they're depleting glucose. And so you need to eat. And just eating an apple or just eating a, a, some celery sticks isn't going to give them what they need. So I found with this client, by giving her a therapeutic dose of a potato or sweet potato, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be like a, you know, like me, like three pounds. It took the edge off her hunger so that she could come home and not be grazing while she was cooking, make the family dinner. And she still ate dinner, but less dinner. And it, it worked really well for her. And what time was that? She was doing it like, okay, so it was like around, uh, like between like three and four, mm -hmm. you know, she worked the early shift and then dinner was like at six and oh. it was working really well. Nice. 
So what do you think about having like a, a little potato hour thing versus, I mean, it's better than happy hour, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. If that works, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I think as people get into uh, ultimate weight loss and eventually mastery, we really want them to be in tune to their hunger and what's, you know, what really is hunger and what's stress. But sometimes some people really are hungry. Mm -hmm. Like if, if we don't know exactly what they ate for lunch, but if they finish lunch at 1215 and dinner's at seven, there's a good chance that they might be hungry mm -hmm. like at four. Yeah, well, right. it's when people are done fasting and they eat steamed zucchini, it's right. pretty satisfying. Right, so, but, but it doesn't have the satiation power of the potato. Well, it, yeah, it's true, it you doesn't. Know? But if they eat a lot of volume of vegetables, that right. would help. But there's nothing wrong with potatoes, they're completely fine, as long as you can get it at that time. Right, or, or have it with you. You know, we talk about pimping it in UWL, P-I-M-P, -P, potato in my purse. Oh, right. Most of us, like Aaron and, and Nikki, we uh, somebody should invent a potato purse for UWL <laughs> with a secret pocket, but most of us carry a therapeutic dose of starch. For me, I carry the starch cookies because they don't need refrigeration, oh, right. they never go back. But but it's true because like I, I even though I do believe that if you're not hungry enough to eat vegetables, you're not hungry, I can eat a pound of vegetables and be hungry a half hour later. So that's why I think a therapeutic dose of starch and also, you know, if you're hungry at four o'clock, eat your dinner. There's nothing wrong with eating dinner early. Yeah. I know people want to socialize with their family and things like that and that's fine. You can you can still socialize with them, have a cup of tea or maybe have a or smaller more vegetables. Or more vegetables. That actually that's the perfect solution. If you're hungry, then eat your starch, and then when, if you have to feed your family later, eat more vegetables with mm -hmm. them. So you're participating, you're eating. But but I think I think the potato hours is, is a really good idea and because for me, there nothing has the staying powder of, of potatoes, sweet potatoes, and winter squashes. I agree. So potatoes are the most filling, most filling food, absolutely. Which is interesting because I don't feel I overeat on potatoes. But when it comes to grains, not all grains, not the pseudo grains, not the wild rice or the quinoa, but there is, because we made brown rice today, there's something about rice that I just want more yeah. of it. Is there, do they put something magic in rice? I don't to, think so. So what, 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 what Usually you, it's, it's you, you feel that with wild rice? No, wild rice I don't and right. quinoa I don't. Right. But when, when, look, I could eat white rice all day. Yeah. It's, I love it and I'll be honest, it's my guilty pleasure. I don't, I don't cook it, but if I'm out and about, I mm -hmm. enjoy it. But white rice and brown rice, there's something just aromatic that, mm -hmm. and even oats, not, not the oak rope, but there's something about it that's like, I can eat more of it than potatoes. Is there something in grains that we don't know about that's acting on our brains? Well, with oats, definitely. Mm -hmm. Most people feel that with oats, for sure, that it, it affects their brain. Mm -hmm. um, but white rice, sure, because it's processed. I know, it's but like, brown rice yeah. and wild rice, usually nobody has that reaction. I just find I can eat more of it because it's just so good and mm -hmm. the smell. Well, yeah. you don't have to chew it as long either. The white, mm -hmm. right? Maybe it's a texture thing right. too. But I will say this, uh, you know, because one of the things we get from UWL, you've seen it, like when people have a stomach ache, they'll say, "Oh, I really, this is where I really miss toast and crackers mm -hmm. or ginger ale," because we don't do flour and sugar. Once in a while, when I do have a stomach ache, there, nothing settles it like white rice. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it's interesting when people say ginger ale because there's usually not any ginger in real ginger ale. It's yeah. ginger flavor. Uh huh. So. Hmm. You know, you know. If you don't mind, I'm going to ask JP a question um, because we had some people relapse of people both in mastery and in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program um, on the holidays, which is to be expected. Nothing to be ashamed of. We don't care. I mean, not that we don't care, but we we don't judge you if you relapse. We just want you to get back on track right away. But we've got a few stragglers that are still now. This is what January 10th, mm -hmm. and they're still not back on track. So, how do we get people that? did struggle during the holidays to, you know, it's now it's January 10th, it's time to say goodbye to the party foods. How the do easiest thing to do is follow the program. Mm. Those people are not following the program, unfortunately. When you ask them, how'd you do with your green powders? What? What's green powder? How'd you do with your essential oils? Essential oils? What are essential oils? How are all your vision boards coming along? What's a vision board? Exactly. Yeah. Well, so they're not following the program for one. Number two, how'd they do with calling us when they were in they didn't. peril? Yeah, you so. know what? It's like, it's so funny because when truth be told, we, we know some of the people we want. They're lovely people. We won't mention their name, but you know, it's like, why'd you do it? You know, why didn't you text us? because they have our numbers at least in mastery and they go because they really didn't want to be yeah. talked off the ledge. Yeah. But you know what, what is the one thing in you, viewing audience at home and you here can guess, what is the one thing in, that all the relapsers had in common? An, an unclean environment. Yay! All the items they relapsed on were in their environment. So another, they're not following the program, another well, reason. Right, so, so, but what's interesting is one of the, one of the uh, students relapsed on the A of sofas, the alcohol, oh, right. and one of them decided to play full out and relapse on all five yeah. of them, uh, uh, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt. And 
you know, when we asked them really honestly, like, would you have gone out if it wasn't in your house? Mm -hmm. They said no. Yep. Now, but what was interesting is after the first relapse, because it, it wasn't just like one, because I, I think there's a difference between a slip and a relapse. Yep. To me, a slip is like, I went, I went to a restaurant and ordered a baked potato and they put salt, you know, to me a slip is kind of unplanned. You weren't, mm -hmm. you know, and then you get right back on track. So what was interesting is after their first slip, relapse, whatever you want to call it, then they said, but then once that, those, that, uh, the, the cravings were reignited, oh, yeah. then yeah, I will go, go then, and then I will go out for it. So, so that's the other thing. And, um, if it, you know, they're sick of hearing this, but if it's in your mouth, if it's in well, your mouth, it's because it was in your house. Yeah. yeah. Right. And one bite is, you know, too much. A thousand is never enough. Yeah. Right. Think of Ben Franklin. What does he say? It is far easier to quell, to suppress the first desire than try and satisfy all that follow. Mm -hmm. So if you are not back on track yet, number one rule of healthy living, according to Dr. Lyle, is clean up your environment, no yep. junk food in the house. And get on the boards, get on the mm -hmm. Ultimate Weight Loss boards and start posting because you need that support. And accountability too. Yep. Do you guys want to scooch a little to the left? There you go. Okay, um, Colleen said, I have an afternoon slump where I feel like I could fall asleep. Any pointers? Sure, I got one over here. Ooh. Oh, the essential oil. It's called peppermint oil. Mm -hmm. So as I've been telling people from day one in UWL, open up your essential oil, take a big hit wow. out of it, and all of a sudden you wake up. Now that one for sure. You know, lemon too, I yeah, think. Lemon, yeah, lemon. Yeah, peppermint works a little bit better. Right. The other thing you can do is take a toothpick and stick it in here and then put it in your mouth and just let it be in your mouth for a little bit. You want to use this, and these all are on my site. I've told you a thousand times. It's livingwithharmony.org, and you click on resident recommendations. Every product on there I use, so this is one of them for sure. So, if somebody, are there other reasons for slumps? Like, I mean, oh, sure. like low blood sugar, uh, yep. you know. Well, there's many things. A lot of times it's dehydration, mm -hmm. lack of circulation because you've been sitting in a chair all day, mm -hmm. so your heart hasn't beating as, as much. You'd be far better if you had a standing desk. Yeah. Or if you just got up and moved a little bit throughout the day to increase circulation to your brain. And dehydration is a big one. And, of course, blood sugar dropping. If they're only eating vegetables all day long and their blood sugar drops, that's when your potato hour Potato hour, yeah. yeah. You know, so I don't really have – I mean, there's occasionally I, I feel like my eyes will start to close, you know, 4 o'clock mm -hmm. or whatever, like you say. And then I'll get up and because I'm sitting at the computer yeah. all day. But one thing I notice is I, I really don't like driving that much, especially in L.A. But I notice when I drive long distances – I will get sleepy and it has yep. nothing. What is that, do you think? I mean, does, is that common? Because I just feel like boredom, maybe. Yeah, and just, well, and, and you're just tired, just in so general. So that would be a good this thing. This is the easiest yeah. way to wake up is, the, is peppermint oil. The other thing you can use is the beat boost. I only use that on fitness days. For yeah, so the beat boost, yeah. remember, is six beets and 35 tart cherries per serving. And the main benefit of the beets is it's a vasodilator. It works just like Viagra. Mm -hmm. It's open up, opens ah. up blood vessels and allows increase in circulation and particularly oxygenation. And then the, the tart cherries in here reduce inflammation. And it tastes really good. It and I use good. it in dessert recipes as well. And I like it better now that he's putting it in the, the container like this because I don't always need a full serving because it's too strong for right. me. So. And again, it's use the code JP16. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to beatboost.com or just go to my livingwithharmony.org site and it's all there. Yeah. So those would be two things. Make sure you open up your window when you're driving so fresh air is in there. Yes. And then if you're driving for long periods of time, try to get in and out of your car, take a rest break if it's safe to stop and walk. Also, some, I don't know if this pertains to Co Colleen, if she does use still ca caffeine or drink coffee in the morning, but I find that people that caffeinate in the morning tend to get a slump in the afternoon. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. It goes, <laughs> So that would be, you know, and then yeah. they, and then a lot of times they'll have more caffeine yep. to to compensate for that. So, okay, Lydia has two questions. Okay, when is your new book? When is your new book going to be available on Amazon, and will you have the Audible option? Why don't um, I answer that first? Okay. okay. So yes, it, right now we're when you write a book, it's it's done, but then they send you the copy of the book and you know, you find mistakes. And so we're, we found some, so we're waiting for that. So I'm praying by February now, it's got to be, cause I keep pushing over, away these, these speaking jobs. So it's going to be available on Amazon, but we're not doing pre-order or pre-sales because we're doing what's called a launch. We, to help me out, to help my rating, if everybody buys the book, if you're going to buy it anyway, on the same day, we're going to do ex incredible bonuses like the audible version for free and audible. Wow. Usually we don't set the prices on Amazon or audible, by the way, audible books usually are around 20 to $25. It's they decide. But if you buy the book the day that I want you to buy, 
buy it, you'll get the Audible book for free and another at least one cookbook, maybe two original cookbooks that you guys haven't seen because I never released them. Get on my mailing list at eatonprocess.com so you know what that day is. And it's an amazing book. I I've already so. read Thanks. it. It's incredible. And, uh, Dr. Caldwell B. Estelson Jr. endorsed it, so that was really cool. And we got about 35 of the plant-based uh, heroes endorsing it, like Dr. Nice. Campbell and Dr. McDougall and Dr. Davis. And the photos are incredible. And, yeah, guy did a good job, yeah. Okay, and then her other question was, could you recommend 10 of your most favorite <laughs> books pertaining to weight loss and well, food addiction? Well, I can only, I can recommend 10 of my favorite books, but if, for weight loss and food addiction, I only have, well, two until mine comes out. So that would be, for weight loss, I think the best book right now is called The McDougal Program for Maximum Weight Loss because it's where I learned everything about calorie density. And the best for food addiction is the best for addiction in general, which is The Pleasure Trap by Dr. Lyle and Goldhammer. And in my, I really believe that until my book comes out, and even if you didn't buy my book, those are the only two books you need. I would recommend Ultimate Weight Loss myself because that has everything in it. Right, right. So all you That's need to do true. is instead of reading 10 books, That's just right. join our Just program. read one book, right. <laughs> I did all the work so you don't have to. But I mean, there's a lot of great books. There's How Not to Die, Anything by Brittany yeah, yeah, Davis. We, books. we love but all those books. But if you're though, talking about food addiction, most of the food addiction books written by experts in food addiction are not no, vegan. Actually, course. none of them are. Not. So mine will probably be the only uh, book to uh, give a plan for recovery or, or uh, overcoming food addiction from, with the vegan message yeah and uh, so you know there's but, other great but all our information is in ultimate weight loss well, it's in the program that's the true program. That's so true. if somebody wants to read books it's fine but what we've done is we've already read those books and condensed yeah. everything anyhow right so that's what i recommend thanks lydia okay julia wants to know if everyone needs to be salt free what about children i'll let you start yeah so um I don't know about children, and uh, I don't have them. Well, first of all, it's I don't like salt that. Free no, is different yeah, than, salt free is different than sodium. I mean, salt exactly so, so added every, sodium free. Right. Everybody yeah. agrees we need sodium as an electrolyte, mm -hmm. so we've yeah. never denied that. That's mm -hmm. naturally in food, but salt adding additional salt—that's a whole other story. Right. And especially if you're a food addict, it's an absolute no-no. If you were somebody that was drinking pure water all day long and exercising like a crazy person and restricting sodium, yeah, then of course anything you can do to get sodium in would be important. But the benefit of somebody adding salt onto their food is generally to get them to eat more vegetables. Right. If it'll get you to eat more vegetables or healthy food, well, that's, that's as long as right. you're, you don't have high blood pressure or some issues. Sometimes I notice with people in general and addicts in particular, you give them an inch and they take a foot. And so one of the reasons I'm reticent to say to the masses, it'd be different like when you and I work with private clients, yeah, go ahead as long as you're putting it on vegetables. It's not so much that they're steaming the kale and sprinkling right, the thing. Not. It's like they're making the vegan cheese sauces. Mm -hmm. They call it for a teaspoon of salt in them. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah. say? So, so um, this came up at True North, actually. This was a big discussion because I do believe what Dr. Goldhammer says in SOS free, in our case, SOFAS free, we added flour and alcohol. Uh, I, I do think it's probably the best diet. It's the natural diet of man. You know, humans didn't evolve adding salt to their food. Other animals in nature, they, they don't add salt to their food. They get sodium from the food, which we're genetically hardwired to prefer the taste of, just like we are with sugar, or taste buds on the tip of the tongue for salt and sugar. And it's an, like John Pierre says, it's an essential nutrient without which you die. But if you eat the diet we recommend in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, you'll get about 500 milligrams a day, five or 600. As long as you're not sweating a ton, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't have an issue. But if you're sweating a ton, then you could bump up your, you know, salary. People, or people Swiss say chart. that they have low blood pressure, and their doctor tells them to eat salt. My blood well, pressure is 88 over 54. Wow! And my understanding is, as long as you as long as you don't feel like you're going to be mm -hmm. weak, that's a good. What, what, what's what? Is it the, is it the Tara Humara Indians? There's mm -hmm. a tribe of Indians that have really low blood pressure. They don't eat salt. I can't remember if it's well. Tara. No, no, nobody eats salt. I mean, that's right. a min, it's the only mineral they would actually add to our food. Right. What it is is the sodium we need. Mm -hmm. So it's not the, it's not the table salt. The thing is, if people ate enough vegetables, like we tell them yeah. on Ultimate Weight Loss, particularly greens, they wouldn't miss the salt so much. Mm -hmm. So here's where it came up at True North, because it, we find that it's really hard for people, especially people that like salt, or even people that don't, to get used to the taste of the food without salt. And so, so people are saying, well, maybe we should loosen the recommendations up. And what that would look like, though, is if you're getting about five or 600 from the food, what they're saying is we shouldn't really need, go over about 1,000 milligrams mm -hmm. a day. Now, remember, a teaspoon of salt has 2,300 milligrams a, uh, of salt. That's not a lot. 
Well, so what that would look like in the real world, I'm gonna have you this product, is if you're already getting five or 600 from the food, which you would if you eat enough calories, mm -hmm. especially if you're eating vegetables, and you could have about 600 more and still be under the limit, which are, I don't know if it's the government or whatever recommends, that would be a quarter teaspoon of salt. I don't know if you can even see how little a quarter teaspoon of salt mm -hmm. is. Can, can you, can, does that, did you yep, get in that? it's showing up. It's, it's nothing. I mean, what are you gonna do with that? I mean, I've never seen a recipe in the traditional world that calls for a quarter teaspoon. I mean, so you're sprinkling it on. Your, yeah, that's I, a couple teaspoons of the hot sauce or, you know, something like that. I mean, like that. you know, I would much rather use Brew Brew Brothers hot sauce, which is SOS free, to get flavor. I, I just, see, I just can't imagine that this is the deal breaker. That Because people write me all the time, they're saying, I, um, can I do the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, or I'd like to join the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, but I refuse to give up salt. And I'm like, fine. I mean, we have people in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program that refuse to give up alcohol and cigarettes, yeah, so. which I want to ask you about that, because I, I actually had a session with Dr. Lyle about that the other day, and he said that, not that they shouldn't join or we should kick them out, but he said, if you're drinking alcohol to excess, or actually even at all, if you're trying to lose weight, it's not gonna help, then you gotta take care of that first. Mm -hmm. And even before cigarettes, and then cigarettes, and then worry about the food. People say, well, I'm afraid if I quit smoking, I'll gain weight. Well, I mean, that's all, I mean, just all addictions. Right. It's all, all the same thing they have to, I, I personally think that if they wanna join the program and they said they can't give up salt, then do what you can with our program. Absolutely. If somebody says, hey, look, it, I'm gonna give up all meat but one meat, well, fine, give up all those up. 99% is better than, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Whatever, do whatever you can. But to get to salt, let me just explain something quickly. So what I do when I'm working with athletes that are in ultimate weight loss, we don't have to add salt. What we do is I use, uh, for, this is a mineral spray. It's called actually Fort of Salt, but mm -hmm. it's just a mineral. And uh, you just spray it on your food and it's a source of minerals. Mm -hmm. It has some sodium in it though. Now, if they don't wanna use that, then I have them use sea vegetables, mm -hmm. which have sodium. And if they don't wanna do that, then I have them take celery and juice it and then make ice cubes out of the celery juice and then take, take that ice cube, they add it to the brown rice, they add it to the soup or they add it to the water bottle and then they drink it, which gives them more sodium. Mm -hmm. So that, that's it, very and, easy and to do. If they can go 30 days without salt, the food will, ta will start tasting yeah. more salty well, and they can yep. use so sour as a, as a supplement. Well, you know, I mean, how many hundreds of spices are there? Oh my God. And not only the spices, then there's essential oils you can use. Ooh. So it's very easy to, to make your food more palatable. You know, what's so amazing is, the, the thing is, is a lot of the people that see us, they don't have the, uh, they've never taken a cooking class with right. me. Like, I taught a cooking class last night in, a, in, a, you know, in a, a real culinary school that's not vegan, and it was the first time I did all UWL recipes. I didn't list them as that, and the people were blown away. These are people that didn't even know who I were, what, was, they just wanted to take a hands-on cooking class, and they couldn't believe it. They go, oh my God, the food's so good. I can't believe it doesn't have sugar. I can't believe it doesn't have oil, doesn't have, have salt. The problem is, is that in culinary school, they don't teach this way of cooking. Right. And so there's only like a handful of chefs, like myself and Kathy Fisher and Ramses Bravo and Mauricio, you know, who know how to make food taste amazing without salt, because mm -hmm. it is the hardest thing. I want to get back to the question about kids in a minute, but I, I don't want to forget what I asked you about the people that are worried if they quit smoking, they'll gain weight. Mm -hmm. They're overweight now, mm -hmm. so the smoking isn't helping. It's just more excuses. Helping, yeah. you know? It's just more addicts excuses. Yeah. But I really do encourage you, whether you're in ultimate weight loss or not, if you smoke, I'll, I'll go tend to that beep. It's telling me to rotate the trace. Uh, Talk for a minute about okay. kids, though. Should we tell kids yeah. not to add salt? Well, you don't want to develop, um, you know, food disorders in children. But as long as you're giving them enough, you know, calories, mm -hmm. fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and some nuts and seeds, they're going to be fine in terms of their sodium. If they're very active, okay, if they're very active outside, then again, things like Swiss charge or more salary, some hummus. Uh, if you buy hummus that usually has salt, salt in it, if you buy canned beans that has salt in it, th there's salt everywhere. What we do is we get we make our own hum hummus, so it obviously it doesn't have any salt or we don't add any. And if we buy beans that have salt, we just rinse them off. You may not want to rinse them then for your kids if you wanted your kids to have more sodium, but that's a decision you'd have to make with your doctor. But kids are really no different than us except they're more active. So they do sweat more. That beeping was my air fryer telling me to rotate the trays. And, and you're going to ask me, well, how long? How do you, I cook everything at 400? And just for, I don't. I just do it, right? So so I, I missed part of your answer. So is kids okay for kids to add salt? 
Well, I mean, they're no different than us. They can get mm -hmm. salt, sodium the naturally in their food. Too, but yeah. if you didn't want to rinse your beans, mm -hmm. that has salt in it. So that's something like and that And the thing is, fine. is most people are not getting salt from the salt shaker. No. It's the excess. They're getting it from eating processed foods. Well, bread. Well, bread has more salt than, than chips. Yeah. Because and then, it's, it's hidden. And then when you eat meat, I mean, when you look at the red, that's blood. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the sodium is. It is in the blood. Well, yeah. and they inject sodium into they meat. They do. Right Especially yeah. chickens. So, yeah. so that's the thing. So, so I agree with you that wherever you are in your ultimate weight loss journey or, or optimum health journey, we still welcome you. We don't, we don't shame you or no. bash you if you have some of these habits or addictions. We discuss them. You know, yeah. we know they're not health promoting, but I think there's a greater chance of compliance down the road if you're still with a group of like-minded people doing yeah. it. But, but so many people say, well, it's you know, it's unsustainable. I mean, that the way we teach, it's unsustainable. We set the bar so high, people are going to fail. Mm -hmm. And some will, but so many people now are succeeding to the tune of 100, 200, and 300 pounds lost. So it is working for the people that do and it. What are all the people who are being successful say? It's the first time in their life that their brain has been calm and stable. Speaking I of mean, which, yeah. this is a perfect segue, if you don't mind. I, I, I don't have to read all of these, or I can read them fast. But we get we get emails, you and I, uh, from people for whom the program has worked. And so I'd like to read them because they're very nice. One is from, I hope I say your name right, Lakshmi. I hope I said that right. This is a short one. I love UWL. I love the fact that this is the only diet I have heard of where people get to eat well, eat right, and lose weight and regain their health. Thanks for everything we do to help people. Yeah, and just so everyone knows, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Right. But, mm -hmm. but you're, I, we understand what you're saying. Right. Um, I can read the other ones later if we have time. I'll well, see. go ahead, read one okay. more. Read one more. I'm trying to think of which one I should read. This one is about, okay, I'm going to read this one because it's on the same page. And this is from Sherry. Uh, what's interesting is Sherry was slender when she came to the program. And people think, well, I, why should I, the name is Ultimate Weight Loss, but I'm not overweight. Right. I don't have food addictions. We have lots of people that are health coaches and doctors and registered dietitians and nurses they just happen to eat this way because yeah. it's healthy and they want to be with a group of people that are of like mind. Well, and we're also talking about things like essential oils and supplements right. and exercise mm -hmm. and love and compassion. Huh? So, yeah, what? exactly. What? They might not be following it, but we what? are talking about it. Yeah, yeah. You're rubbing off on me. So I love this email because... Um, we talk about, I call it the oat paradox. We have so many people that just will not give up their fruit and oats for breakfast. All right. And they won't eat the vegetables, and they won't even eat the oat gross. So mm -hmm. they eat the more processed version, the rolled oats, which are much higher in glycemic index. And it's just, to me, it's, it's I don't want to say it's almost like flour, but it's a lot closer to flour than it is if you ate the oat mm -hmm. gross. So, but it's better than Captain Crunch. Absolutely. Well, Captain Crunch was good. I <laughs> loved it when I was little. Yeah. Okay, you don't want to hear this, but I'll tell you. In okay. other words, it's not that bad. I, to what oh no, it's eat. not bad. It's not bad. Right. It's not vegetables. Right. When I was little, I used to take Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries and mix it with vanilla ice cream and eat it inside a cantaloupe. Oh well, wow. I was getting the cantaloupe. Okay. So um, this is from Sherry, and this was just out of the blue. She sent this to me. She said, "I never felt the need to eat veggies for breakfast because I was at a good weight and maintaining it without doing that." Well, after being in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program and hearing literally everyone capitalized talk about how eating VFB, an acronym for vegetables for breakfast, was a total game changer, I thought to myself, well, maybe I could just give it a try and see what happens. So right before the Ultimate Weight Loss Conference in Vegas last September, I started eating the Trader Joe's pack of zucchini in the morning, followed by my steel cut oats. Guess what? I found that I liked them. I actually started to look forward to starting my day with them. Then slowly, sweeter things like bananas didn't have the same appeal anymore. Then guess what happened? After a month of eating vegetables for breakfast, my jeans started feeling a little looser. Nothing major, just a bit more roomy and comfortable. So I got on the scale and I had lost four pounds. Just wanted to tell you that I have come on board with the veggies for breakfast bandwagon and I feel even more stable in my brain, nice. which is the most important thing, even less cravings and just overall better. I love this program and I love this way of eating. Freedom from food obsession is bliss. Because of you in this program, I can look forward to experiencing a calm day of enjoying family, coming from a place of strength, peace, and freedom, and not feel the compulsion to stuff myself with unhealthy food-like substances. I bring my delicious food, veggies and sweet potatoes with me, and I do great. After three years of compliance, the trigger foods do not have the same hold on me. Rising above the bondage of emotional eating is a process, but I have come so far, and I have no intention of going backwards. Love and hugs to you both. Blessings to you, my friends. Sherry. Wow. This is amazing. Nice. And I, I mean, I didn't ask her to do this. This is a, like, this is a... 
you better come to Vegas and, and talk about this. It's amazing because what people don't understand is this is a girl that wasn't even overweight mm -hmm. and did what we said and still lost more weight and had the, the freedom from the cravings. That's why we say VFB before your oats. Well, notice Charles eats a huge big bowl. Oh. My gosh, it's oh, yeah. amazing. Even Charles, for six years, it's been six years now that he eats veggies for breakfast and nice. then he eats his oats yeah. or he has his smoothie, but sure. And even Bailey eats vegetables for breakfast. She eats <laughs> cooked carrots and yes she does eat starch with it so VFB the only way to be do we want to reshow the mineral spray so people sure can, can see what brand is it Forte Forte salt. salt and I believe out in LA it's at mothers okay and I think if you go to my other site johnpierre.com there should be a link for this one I haven't put it yet on my living with harmony site but johnpierre.com there's uh, some other products on there but yeah this is what I use uh, mainly I use it because it's a good source of iodine and selenium, so it's just like a mineral supplement. Back to we talked about when people say the program's too hard because of the salt, then, then do the program with the salt. But, yeah. here, but here's the thing. When people are really honest, at least the ones that talk to us offline, not mm -hmm. while they're posting about their relapse, it wasn't because we we didn't allow them to have salt, that they relapsed on sugar, flour, no, and alcohol. I mean, does that make sense? So yeah. it wasn't because, oh my God, you know, if I could have only put some some, some tamari on my yeah. kale, I wouldn't have ate that cupcake. No. no. If that's not what is making the program too hard, what's making it too hard is that it's hard because many of us are still food addicts and we still want to eat the things that are going to give us that three-minute dopamine blast. You know, I always yeah. say, like, three-minute blast of pleasure, lifetime of pain and suffering. Well, and we have people say the same thing about wine. Oh, if, if only I could have drank my wine, I would have been fine. Yeah. <laughs> or smoke their cigarettes, yeah. or eat their ham right. sandwich. They right. always have excuses. Right. Well, we're, uh, we're sympathetic to it, but we just like to be, we're right. honest, and we'll let you right. know it's just an excuse. But salt isn't the reason that you can't do this program. It's not the relapse reason you're relapsing on sugar, flour, and alcohol. Not having salt, if anything, is making it easier for you not to have sugar. And ask the less. people who go to True North and fast, mm -hmm. when they get steamed zucchini for breakfast, if they said it's the greatest thing they've yeah. ever tasted in their life. And, and they start saying, my God, the food's so salty. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, BJ Swingle I know asked, her. what are your thoughts on kelp noodles in a salad? Yeah, I think they're okay. I mean... I think I, they're good, big, but you have to be very careful because they're very high in iodine. Soak them. So, well, yeah, no, but I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's what you do, but they right. still are extremely high in iodine, so you don't want to eat too much. And maybe not so much for BJ, but for some people, they can be a little bit of a gateway because suddenly you start thinking you're getting noodles again, and before you know it, the kelp noodles switch over to, well, what's wrong with brown rice noodles? Yeah, and then right. what's wrong with white rice yeah, pasta? Yeah, and if, as long as I put vegetables in, I'm okay, right? Right. So you gotta be careful, because yeah. it can act as a gateway. Uh, so that's all. I, I think, well, I don't eat them very much. They do serve them occasionally at True North, but it's in the context of a salad with a lot of vegetables. Yeah. So it's not like the feel of eating kelp noodles with marinara sauce. It's like it's in a big old yeah. dish where it's a, provides they're, a little They're crunch. very, very high in, in, in iodine, yeah. so you have to be careful. Right. I just, I, last night we made the zucchini pasta in class. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, that's my favorite. Yeah. I love that. And if you blanch that, it really, and especially if you peel it first so it yeah, looks white. Yeah, amazing. You think you're eating You need pasta. a spiralizer. Yeah, and, I, spiralizer is great. Mm -hmm. Amy said, I don't mind if you read it, and if I were to ask you something, it would be what keeps you motivated. What is driving you to help others? Yeah. I can show you. Oh, this is my driving force. <laughs> Not just this one, but all the animals that suffer needlessly. You know, I think that, I mean, I am vegan, obviously, for 40 years, but even if I wasn't, I would be doing something to help animals, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I, one of the things that gets me and I said this on the in, in Mitch source because they, they asked this question, is that I have OCD, and my OCD is specifically geared towards uh, horrific images of animals mm -hmm. being tortured and abused. Even though I've never watched any of the documentaries uh, like Earthlings, I just have just a tremendous empathy in general, but especially for animals. And um, if, if you take me to the animal shelter, this is why I couldn't go to Vegan Toastmasters, because it took place at the animal shelter oh. in a meeting room. If I see an animal in a cage, I, I flip out. And I had a public access television show in college. It was called Pep Talk. And I interviewed people like Gretchen Weiler, who, oh, who yeah. founded the Genesis Awards. I interviewed veter veterinarians. And this show was almost 30 years ago. And at that time, the statistics in Los Angeles were that 1,000 dogs and cats were put to death in the city of Los Angeles. And to me, that's egregious. It's like, you know, I don't understand how it's even legal to just, you know, well, this, this literally happened. The lady was like, we remodeled our house and the dog doesn't match the new carpet. And she turned the dog in. I'm not wow. making this up. 
I saw this. And to me, you know, this is what motivates me is even though I don't have the same connection with farm animals, not only because they don't live here, I love, I mean, I don't personally know that many pigs and cows and stuff. I go to places like General Barn and Farm Sanctuary and hear the stories of the abuse and I know the statistics. And so what keeps me motivated is that even though the program is ultimate weight loss, because if we call it ultimate ethics or planetary survival, we're not gonna get any customers, that at the end of the day, it is a vegan program. A lot of people come to it just for the weight loss and they end up becoming accidental mm -hmm. vegans. And so what keeps me motivated is knowing how many animals are being tortured and abused and anybody that will listen to me that will eat either a completely, I don't like the word plant-based, plant-exclusive mm -hmm. diet or even less, like you say, less animal products, that that really is what keeps me going from the, yeah, yeah you know, so. Yes, yeah, well, well obviously the same with me, but also it's, so motivating to see people change their life, lose weight, lose blood pressure goes down, arteries open up, cognition improves, their self-esteem improves. That's what's very motivating. When we see clients do that, we're more motivated to want to work and share this message with as many people as we can. Because the idea is we just feel like we are taking a candle and lighting someone else's candle, and mm -hmm. then we hope they're going to take their candle and light somebody else's. So it's all about making the world a better place. Right. And then keeps me motivated is letters like this one that came today. Dear AJ, I was looking through your cookbook today trying to get some inspiration to get out of a couple of Dr. Lyle's traps, meaning the pleasure trap and the ego trap, and I wanted to reach out to say thank you to you. I'm a member of your UWL private group, but in a peripheral way, looking for inspiration and motivation while not necessarily following all of its tenets. And that's fine. It's okay. You know, it's not, it's not an all or nothing. Yep. I mean... I have to follow the tenets because I create, mm -hmm. I mean, how would that, look, I didn't, you clearly saw that I used almond milk with sodium. Can you, are, can you please punish me? I was bad. I used sodium. But, but you get what we're saying. We're, um, she, uh, you have a very big heart and are trying to help so many people. It is so amazing. I'm in awe of how you keep up with the group. That's because literally my job, 12 hours a day, is just reading your posts. Um, and have created such a welcoming space for people. That's what people love about it, guys, mm -hmm. is the group. Even as the size of the group has almost doubled since I joined, which was a little more than a year ago, your energy and determination to help others is unsurpassed. And I just want to let you know how much I personally appreciate it, and so many others too. Your focus on the application problems that so many of us have when trying to adopt a UWL, MWL, WFPB diet was so underserved and not really focused on for so long. I'm glad it's beginning to get more attention. So. Um, I, I dislike sending these kind of emails, but I like receiving them because I figure you are so busy and I'm not really saying much and I don't have a success story for you personally, but I really, really feel the need to say thank you today. So thank you so much, Amy. Awesome. So, so this is the other thing because there are days that I just want to just like, you know, it's oh. like, but, but again, you know, when we see the Heathers and the Shadas yeah. and the BJs and the Tammies and the Lauras and the Kristens and on and on and, and on Transformation Tuesday when people post things, I'm like, Right. Well, any, wow. you know, anybody, when we see anybody that's in the program and they're getting something out of it, we're thrilled. It doesn't matter who it is. And remember that while you're watching this, you, there's a share button. You can be sharing this right now if you like. And if you want to be with us in person, come to Vegas. Oh, Guys, yeah. you have three weeks to save $250 on the live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference. We have Dr. Neil Barnard. Mm -hmm. Not very many people know more about addiction than him. Mm -hmm. He's a psychiatrist and he's written a book about addiction, the, the Breaking the Food Seduction. Mm -hmm. And he, it, he, he was really hard to get him. He's our keynote speaker. You've got myself and Jean Pierre. You've got, of course, the extraordinary Dr. Lyle, Dr. Goldhammer. This is the only conference that they actually present together. That's amazing. And, and that's worth everything. Compliant food, but more importantly, the people, the friendships that are forged. It, it's the Tuscany is a wonderful, mm -hmm. very affordable hotel, $79 a night. You can get up to five in your room. I mean, you know you want to go. Why not buy the ticket in the next three weeks yep. so that way we got enough money to pay them to have the conference and you save $250 and get the meet and greet for free. And we've got our boot camps too. And Bailey's going to be there. Oh, well, there you so go. So that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's that. And, and we pass her around like a joint at a rock conference. At one point, <laughs> one point, Ian Armitage, the star of the show Young Sheldon, he was there. Oh, right. uh, we, uh, we get celebrities there and he's this most adorable uh, young man. And uh, he, he took Bailey. Remember, we couldn't find her. It's like we didn't. So she gets passed around a lot there. So we hope you'll attend. Any any more questions or any questions? Um, do you want to comment on why you don't like the term plant-based? Yeah, because to me, 
plant-based, based means it's based in plants, but it's not exclusive to plants, and so that allows people to have things like animal products. Right. So I, I don't say I'm on a plant-based diet, I say I'm on a whole food plant-exclusive diet. Right, and there's a difference between plant-based and vegan, because vegan yep. really isn't a diet, it's a lifestyle. And can it's it, a belief I, system, too. Can I be right. both? You're right. It's Oh. Yeah, and it's a belief system, so it goes into not wearing animals or utilizing them for entertainment uh -huh. or right. you know anything. So yeah. that there's a big difference between plant-based and vegan, and people are starting to water down vegan. Yeah, they're starting to say they're vegan but as they're, they're going to the rodeo, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Or they're wearing a fur coat. They're plant-based in their diet, but they're not vegan. And yeah. that's just a distinction we need to make. But yes. we don't. We accept all people yeah. and all. Well, stages sure. Of their well, we just—it's just like you wouldn't want to call yourself um, a priest if you weren't a priest. It's kind of confusing. You don't yeah. call yourself a Navy SEAL, right? <laughs> because you 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 have a boat, so you just—you know <laughs> what I mean? It's just—it's it's just not right, you know. So we just want to be accurate in the Thank description. Thank you, Father JP. Yeah. So. Right. Absolutely. Good point. All right. So. Um. Do we have time for one more? Absolutely. Okay. I got to think about what I'm going to make next week on the show. Janet Hoffman. Um, asked if you could talk about what it physically feels like to be comfortably full. She just doesn't know what it feels like. That's Maybe a great it, question. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like saying, what does chocolate taste like? It tastes good. Mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't had it in 10 years, but I remembered it tasting good. So f you answer that, and I'm going to turn that Well, off. generally when you're, you're eating, you should feel like there's a little room that you could eat a little bit more. But you shouldn't feel so stuffed that you can't go out and run and play tennis and feel alive and full of energy. Once you leave a meal and you, you're exhausted or you want to go to sleep, that's overstuffed. When you have just a little bit less, like in, in, in the Okinawans, they call it hari hachi bu, eating to 80% full. That means they leave the table knowing, yeah, I could have another potato, another sweet potato, some more rice or some more vegetables, but no, I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at. So I, it's, it's hard to explain exactly what full feels like, but one of the ways we can learn what it, what it is is by fasting. So when people fast, they learn what true hunger really is. And we're not saying you should fast without medical supervision, but you know, fasting or having a fruit and vegetable day, those are easy ways to start feeling what hunger really is. Right, they should be comfortable in other words, right? Um, you should be a, a comfortable, maybe a little less than comfortable. Can you see these? Because I don't want you to have to move to the kitchen again. Look yep, great. Okay. those look good. All right, so I'm gonna put these over here for now. So, um, I wanna answer your question, AJ, what, oh. because- Oh wait, you, okay, I'm gonna answer that one okay. too, but is that okay if I answer that? Of I course. Heard what you said about Hari Hachi yeah. Boo. So, um, a lot of people that came to come to UWL, like myself, have lifelong history of discordant eating, eating disorders, anorexia, bulimia, mixed. And we do suggest that while we welcome you, if you are active in anorexia or bulimia, like not so much the binging, but if you're purging, this is not the right group for you at this well, time. We recommend you should be in therapy. You, well, with Dr. Lyle, preferably. Yeah, and Dr. if Kira they Saunders. then send us, yeah. you know, you, that's fine. But right. we, we suggest you get yeah, therapy first. because we can't help you with that while that disease is active. But so a lot of people say, well, I don't know when I'm hungry, and therefore I don't know when I'm full. As you do your ultimate weight loss journey, because I, I was the same way, but here's, here's why. Most of us even if we're vegan, ate a lot of processed food, which is completely bereft of fiber mm -hmm. and, and nutrients, and uh, or possibly animal products and processed food. If you think of something like chicken nuggets, which is like something kids eat a lot of, or pizza, these are soft foods. They really don't require chewing. Mm -hmm. They're they're so soft. Things that you know, the, like when you think of bread, or when you think of you know a cinnabon or chicken nuggets or any kind of vegan pastry. These are very soft foods that could almost melt in your mouth and don't mm -hmm. require chewing. And believe it or not, chewing increases satiety, which is why we don't really recommend smoothies or juices unless they're completely just green, because chewing, the act of chewing increases satiety, and these very soft foods, like the breads, you can pretty much swallow them yep. whole. So that's one thing, because our satiety signals have been distorted for years of eating animal products and processed food, which contain virtually no fiber. Mm -hmm. And so you come to a program like the Ultimate Weight Loss Program that's like 40, 50, 100 grams of fiber, and that's why some people are experiencing the flatulence uh -huh. and, the, and you know the bloating at the beginning, and it, it can take a while. Now, I am currently rereading my favorite book, The Pleasure Trap. I read it every year, just like I read You Can Heal Your Life every year, and, it, and there's one chapter in there that I really encourage you to, to, uh, to read, or reread if you already have the book, which is about the YOWL circuits, Y-O-W-E-L, you are overweight, eat less, where he talks about the stretch receptors. 
And people vary genetically in how sensitive their stretch receptors are. And if you're somebody that came from a history of discordant eating, where you were overeating or binging and mm -hmm. eating way past full, well, it's almost like you've stretched out your stretch receptors. You didn't break them. Those sensitivity will be restored, but it can take a while. The other thing is, is because most of the people that came or are in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program are emotional eaters. They're eating for reasons other than hunger. You can learn to easily ignore those feelings of fullness if you're medicating with these foods. So if you could really be mindful and pay attention and eat for hunger and survival instead of entertainment or, or, or to medicate yourself, you would really know when you're full. We have so many people now that multitask. They're, they're texting, they're watching TV, they're in the car, they're not, and so you can't really feel these signals when you're doing something else, which is why, you know, a lot of the monks, when they eat, they eat in silence, which I, I actually get very anxious. I have social anxiety and I don't like eating with people because I can't really focus on I, I overeat because we're talking, we're, we're swallowing air. So you can learn to feel when you're full. You know, water's an interesting thing because water doesn't have any satiety in and of itself. When it's in the food, it can add to it. You can drink a gallon of water, you'd feel real full. But 20 minutes, you'll pee it out, you won't feel full. Foods also vary in their satiety. We talked earlier about how the potato had mm. more satiety than any other food. Well, a lot of people that come to Ultimate Weight Loss Program think of it as a diet or some kind of calorie restriction, which it's not. So they're eating like vegetables, which don't have the same satiety because they're mostly water. They're, mm -hmm. And they get, and so until you can really start being comfortable eating, you know, large amounts of starch, lots of vegetables, of course, it will come because you can notice that different foods have different levels of satiety. I get much more full on potatoes than I do on white rice, for example. You know, more fiber, things like that. Sure. Oh, you want to show the muffin? Of sure. Course. Yeah. Mm. Wanna, I'll give you $100 if you eat that muffin <laughs> on the air right now. $100 to your animal nice. sanctuary. By the way, JP has a website, livingwithharmony.org. He's trying to raise money to open an animal sanctuary. And if you would kindly go to your Amazon Smile account and put Living With Harmony as your uh, choice, then every few pennies of your sale will help him save more animals. So, so again, for, for me, I guess um, it takes the brain a little longer to realize you're full than the tummy. And a lot of people that are food addicts tend to eat very fast. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things you can do is slow down. And I don't, you don't have to put your food on a special plate or chew it 30 times, but just learn to slow down by not having the distraction, maybe putting your fork down between bites. One of the things you taught me, eating with chopsticks, because I mm -hmm. tend to be a very, very fast eater. So, so slowing down, realize this. You, you know, this isn't a weighing and measuring program where you have to report to a sponsor the day before what you're going to eat and where you're admonished if you ate a kidney bean instead of a garbanzo beans. Is Charles here? Mm -hmm. Yep. God, I just heard somebody sneeze. I'm like, who broke in? So, so the thing is, is you can always go back and eat more. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, is if you're not sure if you're full, but you think you might have eaten enough, maybe take your plate and maybe eat two thirds or three fourths of it. And then for 20 minutes, go check your email. Mm -hmm. Take a walk around the block. Good chance are you already are full. It's it, it, I, I, cause I, it's hard to describe what love is. I, I know what full feels like. Um, and then you could always eat more if it turns out in 20 minutes right. you're still hungry, right? Right. The other thing is, 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 is the more you practice this, of eating a high fiber diet, the more full you'll get and you'll get full quicker. And it, 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 you, this is something that can be restored and that you will learn. But again, if you're eating for emotional reasons, it's never going to happen because you're going to be able to bypass your physical sensations just to go for that that mental high. But but again, you know, going to a place like True North really helps because when you fast, you mm -hmm. kind of know what hunger is. You yep. really restore the sensitivity of those. The other thing is, is one of the reasons we're so adamant about, if possible, following a sofas free dial sugar diet, not dial sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt, is because these aren't foods; they're chemicals. And when you add them to the food, you fool your brain's satiety mechanisms. They cause you to overeat. And so, as we talked about salt earlier, it's an appetite stimulant. Great for a little kid or an old person that's yes. not eating, mm -hmm. but if you're overweight, maybe not so much for you. And so if you fool your satiety mechanisms, you do overeat even if you're full. And sugar does the same thing and flour does the same thing and so does alcohol yeah. and oil. So again, if you're eating the way we suggest, you, the, the, the sensitivity of your stretch receptors should be restored. You will you will learn. And, and, and the thing is, is 
I really encourage you to watch the YouTube I did with Dr. Lyle about weighing and measuring your food. There's no right amount of food to eat. If you over ate on a potato, all that means is it's going to take a little longer the, for the glycogen reserves in your liver and your muscles to be depleted and you'll just get hungrier a little bit later the last day. So if you're eating truly to the left of the red line and not embellishing your food with chemicals like sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, and salt, I promise you, you will in time learn to, to, to know what true hunger is, to know what fullness is. But again, you need to be eating without distraction, at least at the beginning, so that you can get in touch with that and stop eating for emotional reasons. Excellent. Thank you very much. Excellent. BJ Great Swingle question. said, I double that $100 to see JP eat it. Yeah. So you get Do 200 bucks for your sanctuary. Uh -huh. $100 for the sanctuary if you, uh, you eat know, that You know, the interesting thing about these muffins is I know you promote them a lot, but I do think that these muffins, for a lot of people, they have to right. be careful because it can be a gateway. Because you've tried them eating, right? I am not the pumpkin ones. Right, but well, can you can imagine what they taste like. Right. Yeah, These so are a little pumpkin. sweeter than the crams yeah. because this cram doesn't So, But I think people should know that. They need to be careful right. just because the muffins are UWL approved. They can They're not UWL approved. Well, the other ones you make. The cram the muffins. Cram. These are not UWL okay, approved. But the, the cram the muffins. muffins are yeah. UWL approved. There's still a gateway, so you need to be right. careful. I think everything is a gateway to everything, seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, and not everything, but everything that's not compliant. Yeah, but I mean, it's know. not eating the whole food. It, absolutely. You know, you're put, that's why one of the challenges that we talk about in mastery is the whole idea of recipes. Yeah. In UWL, we want you to do recipes. When we get to mastery, we really start talking about a simplifying your eating. So I'm in a, I'm a weird position with, because I'm also a chef mm -hmm. and I get requests for these kind of foods. And I guess one of the reasons I give these recipes is because if somebody's going to go out and have a Cinnabon, if this yep. could prevent that. Sure. So that's what I but, look but at. But people just need to understand. No, yeah, that. Under, they, understand. they need to understand that. And Eden is cracking up, and I don't know why. Eden is, Charles, we need you to take over the broadcast. <laughs> Eden is freaking out. I've never, you got to put yeah. the camera on her. Let's, let's finish up with yeah. this question. What's, what's so funny? i got to see what she's, she can't, she can't okay. function. <laughs> JP, <laughs> JP is probably a divine being and doesn't need to eat earthly food. <laughs> Caroline, I have been saying for years that he is an alien and nobody believed me. He is oh Great Kazoo God. and I am Barney Rubble. Okay, so let's get back to the final question. So AJ has been kind of complaining a lot, saying she doesn't want to do weight training. Because I because still have a trigger thumb. thumb and I'm supposed to be wearing So I told AJ that she can get the same workout with bands. So let's put this on your hand, right? Mm -hmm. So you can put it this way. Okay, mm -hmm. or you can put it this way, you put it over your wrist, okay, Okay, and then if you step on it, you can still do a curl. So you keep your wrist straight, but there's no strain on your thumb. No, it so, isn't. Okay, so here's the key thing to understand. Your bicep doesn't care if a band is giving her resistance, so go ahead, you're getting resistance. Your bicep doesn't care if I'm giving you resistance or if she's holding a can of beans or a jug of water, wow. okay? Cool. But the point is, is you can't, you can't make excuses. Well, I can. You I can, just, you but, know. but then you can't tell everybody here that they have excuses, right? And then blah, 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 because you're making it. <laughs> so the point is what- But what, my excuses are real. Exactly, so the point that I'm trying to make is that the idea is to be goal and solution oriented and not look at the problems. We don't want to see the problems and focus on them. We want to focus on solutions. Right. So there's your solution. Thank you. Okay. And thank you guys for watching another episode of Weight Loss Wednesday, episode 58. Jean-Pierre and I both truly believe you can have both the health and the body you so richly deserve. Good night, everyone.